over to Kelsey Guadarrama, who is the 4-H educator in Marshall County. Kelsey is a horse enthusiast with an extensive background, um, has a really true passion for working with youth as well as horses. So we're excited to have her here today to lead us through Horses at oh. Halt. So I'm going to mute everyone again just to make sure we're all muted. Again, please stay muted. Type those questions in the chat box. Kelsey, I'm going to unmute you. All right, good afternoon. Um, I was reading some of the stuff in the chat box already. Uh, the horse book is all the way at the top. It's a link to the Ed store so you can get to the handbook if you need to. But I'm five videos because my barn is actually closed and we're not allowed um, in our barn right now. So no live horses. It was a thought, but after going over it and thinking of logistics, I do have video of horses though, so we will go over all of that. And hopefully you have some good questions at the end because that's my favorite part is asking or answering those questions that people have specifically. Um, Tuesdays and Thursdays are for Marshall County's webinars or maybe your, your county is having specific webinars. Um, I know Marshall County is doing specific ones on Tuesdays and Thursdays, but as far as the livestock webinars, those are on Tuesdays at three. So I am going to share my screen and I promise that I, well, I hope that I don't have anything that bores you guys. I think it's pretty interesting and very inform, informative. And we will start, if you have questions, put them in the chat box and then I will either, um, Courtney can read them to me or I will read them at the very end and we will get started. So like I said, my name is Kelsey Guadarrama. I'm the 4-H Youth Educator in Marshall County. And we are going to go over, Courtney, a weird question. Can you guys see yourselves in my, in my PowerPoint? Okay. I'm going to say no. So. Sorry, Kelsey. I cannot, <laughs> I can't, I can see uh, people at their homes, but I, there, okay. I can see you on the side now. But. Okay, perfect. Um, so this is my PowerPoint. That's my horse gunner. We've done a lot of showmanship throughout the years. Uh, we went to the Color Breed Congress and won the English showmanship and the Western showmanship. So I, I think I'm pretty qualified to talk about showmanship as far as basics go and things that you all might have questions on. So what we're going to cover today is how it's judged, the maneuvers that you probably should practice at home or maneuvers that you would encounter in different patterns, performance, what to wear, how to present your horse, and then throughout I have some live examples. I follow quarter horse guidelines because I show quarter horse and it's probably one of the easiest ones to follow. So scoring in showmanship is based on a score from zero to infinity and the average is 70. So this has changed over the years. Uh, before it was more on a scale of uh, zero to 100. And so you'd be in different brackets, but now that has changed and it's zero to infinity with the average of 70. So it's more like reigning is how it is judged now. Uh, and this is what the scorecard would look like if you were to get handed a scorecard. Most judges, probably not in 4-H, would do this, but if you went and asked a judge for some feedback, they would definitely give it to you. But at quarter horse shows, they will actually put this out for you to look at. And if you look at the top here, it says one, two, three, four, five, and that's where your maneuvers for your patterns would go. So if you, have, if you start with a back, back would be the first maneuver and they would score you with a plus or minus. So plus three is like excellent, great, fantastic, you did an amazing job. Negative three, your horse probably bit you and it was probably not very pretty. So that is kind of how that works and it's really nice when they put it out so you know what to work on as far as what you should practice at home. So if you have a chance and you do go to an open show and they follow quarter horse rules, they will probably put those sheets out for you and ask for them so you know what to work on. That's the first thing I do when we get done showing at the end of the weekend, I go look at my score sheets so I know what to practice at home. Okay, 
So that's that part. And then, like I said, you have different penalties. So three, five, 10, and then disqualifications. Um, a three point penalty, I'm not gonna go through all of these. You guys can read them or you can look them up. It's super easy to Google, search the penalties. But the major one is break of gate or overturning. So I know when I do a 90 degree turn, which is just a small quarter turn, I always overturn. I personally worked on that. I know is a three point penalty really of showmanship is that maneuver. So that's something I work on um, running or getting between the cone. So a lot of people, if you are doing a pattern and let's say it's walk from A to B, do a 360, a lot of people will start off too close to that cone and they'll split the cone. And what that means is you're between the cone, the horse is between you and the cone. So like your cone's in between. I hope that kind of makes sense. I'm, it's harder to explain. I, I wish I had a picture to show you, um, but I can maybe explain it in the videos a little bit better. So always making sure that you give yourself enough space in between the cone and the horse. Okay, so then there's other penalties, obviously. Disqualification is if you're off pattern or you have illegal equipment, which we will go over that at the end for how to present your horse. Um, losing control of your horse, uh, letting him go. <laughs> Don't do that, it's not good. Um, so anything like that would be disqualifications. 10 point penalties, again, if they're gonna bite you or they're kicking or they're um, striking out at you, things like that would be a 10 point penalty. People always tell you to keep showing because if you, you aren't disqualified unless your horse is running around or you mess up your pattern. Um, so just keep showing. Someone can mess up worse than you or maybe they have two 10 point penalties and you only have one. So never stop showing. That's really important. Okay, so this is where we'll get into some of the live video. Well, not live, but videos that we've taken at the barn. So it's all about your moves. It's all about being precise, being on pattern, being in sync with your horse. I like showmanship so much because it's very, it's all about your personality. If you are upbeat and fun and you can go through your pattern with skill and precision, it's one of those classes that the more you practice, the better you're gonna do at it. And I have not always had the best horses or the best movers, but I've always, been able to go to the barn and practice. So that's one of the reasons why I love all the pattern classes because again, I don't have to have a horse that's $20,000. I can have a horse that's maybe 1500 and still go win a pattern class because I've practiced, practiced, and practiced. So we're gonna go through the gates, which are the walk and the trot or the jog, um, the back and pivots, a setup and crossovers. So a lot of people get confused in the crossovers and we'll go over that in great detail. And if you have more questions about them, I can answer those as well. Um, but the gates are really important, your walk and your trot. So you want your walk to be brisk and like you're going somewhere, you have somewhere to be. If you can, it's nice if your legs are in sync with your horse's legs. Those are the details that a lot of people don't pay attention to. So. In the first picture here that I have with the sorrel horse, my legs are pretty in sync with him. My V is the same as his V. And that's ideal if you can. Not a major flaw by any means, just something to think about as far as details go for showmanship. So- Hey Kelsey, I'm gonna yeah. back up. We had a couple questions. Also, I'm gonna make a, some kind of ground rules for the chat room. If we can stick to questions, please. Um, we, I know you can privately message someone via the chat if you would like to do so, but um, let's make sure we keep the chat box for questions just so we're not missing any questions. Uh, the first one was, could you get DQ'd for not having your number on? Yes, that is definitely a DQ. You always have to have your number visible for people to see. Okay, and then the second one 
was a question um, that I can answer. The YouTube channel is the Indiana 4-H YouTube channel, so that'll be where all of the um, information is posted uh, for these sessions. And then, okay, and I think the last one's just a comment. Again, um, feel free to, to message folks uh, privately, but we want to make sure we keep this um, keep this to the task at hand, just so we can make sure everyone's questions are appropriately answered. Um, Kelsey, someone also just asked, do you have to have a hat? Um, so that is a good question. We will go over what you have to wear and horse tack at the end. So first we're going through maneuvers and then we'll go through what you have to wear or what is asked that you wear. And then we'll go through tack for your horse. So I will get to those questions, I promise. Um, we're just gonna go through the maneuvers first and then we'll go through there, um, through the tack and equipment. Thank you. So let's go through the maneuvers and then like I said, I'll answer any tack questions or any um, attire questions towards the end because that's part of the presentation anyway. So you'll see that and I'll give you a bunch of different opportunities to ask what is appropriate or what's, what is not appropriate. Okay, so we're gonna do the walk first. Hopefully these videos work. Okay, so your walk, like I said, her arms are in like a 90 degree angle. She's walking briskly, looking where she's going. It's not super slow. Personally, I would like it to be a little bit faster, but not bad. It's brisk enough. She stops at the end, so. That one is, it's okay. I mean, she's brisk looking forward. Her arms are really good. Her posture is really good. This is the trot. So same thing with the trot. You want it to be fast, but not like super fast because sometimes people ask for the extended trot. Her arms are still good. Her posture is good. Her body is really still. I'm gonna play that one again. Uh, her body is really still. She's not um, squatting. A lot of people like to squat, but she's still upright and able to move like she's supposed to. It doesn't look super robotic. It's very fluid. Sorry, I'm reading some of the comments. Again, I'll answer all of the... Yeah, and I think most of it's just been comments on wardrobe, and Kelsey will get to that, so... Um, we'll let her do that in her time. Okay, so that's the trot. Any questions about movement on trotting? How come it will not go to the next slide? Just wants to play that one. Okay, we're gonna go to the back and pivots. So before I get to that part, when you're backing, you don't wanna stand directly in front of your horse. I think a few years ago, probably 10 years ago, I, had worked on my back with this gray horse actually, and I was standing in front. Don't do that, it's a DQ. And um, yeah, just don't, don't stand in front of your horse to back. You still, you want your shoulder to be even with their eye and you're backing with them in line. I mean, this is actually him pivoting, but his neck and his butt will all be straight just like that. And you would just be going in a backwards motion. Who keeps drawing on my screen? Cause that is not me. Um, Maybe it is me. Anyway, so you would do that as far as backing and pivots. So we're gonna show some backs and pivots. This is the back. I just don't know why there's stuff on my screen, but I can't get rid of it. So we're gonna roll with it. Um, in her back, she's moving quickly. She's still on the side of her horse. Her um, shoulder is about even with the eye. It was a really far back for, for Penelope, that's Penelope, uh, to back that far, but she did it nicely. It's, like I said, she gets a little choked up here at the end, but that's okay. She's backing quickly. It was very straight. It was quick and nice and precise, so not a bad overall back, but that's what you're I want you guys to focus on your body position. So her body position is all even. She's going straight back. She's looking where she's going and she's moving with some quickness. Now I'm not saying that you should be flying through your pattern. I'm saying that you should take your time through your pattern 
but you should still be moving in a quick manner. So these are, this is a pivot. She's straight across the line there. Um, she's looking at her hind foot, keeping her right hind planted. So you, a lot of people will plant the left hind, making that pivot a backwards motion. So in this one, it's forward. If you watch her hind foot moves forward and it'll move forward again and she's still staying very, very level. And that would be a plus turn. She's going quick. She's keeping that foot planted. Um, I have an example of a bad pivot so you guys can see that. A lot of people, and I'm not saying it's a horrible thing, but if you can work on it and switch it, my gray horse used to pivot on the left hind. So he'd keep that left hind planted and he, it would be more of a backwards motion. So instead of the right hind staying put and the left moving forward, his left foot would stay and his right hind would move backwards. If you can switch that in your horse, it takes a little bit of practice, but if you can switch it, you'll plus your turns rather than pivoting in a backwards motion. You want everything to be forward moving. Are there any questions on, on movement? The pivots can be a little difficult, so. Um, if your horse walks out of your pivot, it's not super hard to teach. If you just push on, let me pause this in a different spot. If you push on this shoulder, let's say you're in her position, but you're gonna push on her left shoulder, on your horse's left shoulder, and just push on it a few times, it'll teach them to cross over. So the most important part with your pivot is getting them to cross over in the front before you worry about them sticking in the back. Once you get them to cross over in the front, like this horse is doing here, you can get them, you can push them backwards enough to get them to stop and keep their hind foot planted. Like I said, either foot is okay, but if you can have them pivot on their right hind, it is more accurate. Um, someone can't hear. I think most people can hear at this point, so you might just check your settings on your device you're using. Um, Kelsey, did you see the trotting, for trotting, trotting at the blissful jog while you're walking quickly? Is it better that you slowly are jogging them? Okay, so for trotting at the horse will jog while you're walking quickly, is that better that you, so you still want your horse to walk. You still want it to be a flat-footed walk. Um, what I do is I time it out. So if I'm my new horse, my little mare doesn't walk nearly as quickly as my gray horse. So I have had to adjust my movements and my steps to, uh, to make it so that she's not jogging. You don't want her to jog. You still want them to walk, but as quickly and briskly as you can. I'm not saying that every person is going to plus their walk. You still want to have that forefoot four beat gate because otherwise you're breaking gate. So then you're going to have that penalty of three points. So just walking as briskly as you can, staying upright, making sure that you're going forward and not just lethargically letting that horse drag behind you. Um, teaching your horse to pivot is a lot of groundwork. Yes, pivoting is a lot of, a lot of work. But like I said, if you continue to push on those shoulders, and pull backward or push backwards and pull forward, um, they will get it eventually. Um, to go faster in walking and trotting and backing is a lot of practice, 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 practice. Um, the more you do it, the better your horse is gonna get, the better you're going to get with communicating with your horse. Uh, as far as walking faster, if you just kind of push a little bit with that chain that's under their chin, um, they'll go faster for you. They don't want to get pulled on. It's something that is not comfortable for them. It's, they want to get away from that pressure. So if you just kind of push them forward and then release, it's really important that you release. You can't continually pull on your horse because they're going to get mad. They're going to hate it. They're not going to want to do it. Um, so push a little bit, release, push and release. Same thing for the trot. If you're trotting and you want them to trot a little bit faster, just push forward with your hand a little bit and they should follow your hand. Um, I can do shankless showmanship with my gray horse because he follows my body movement. Once you practice enough, you're not gonna need that chain. 
I mean, I'm not saying show without a chain. You should always show showmanship with a chain. We'll get to that. But um, they should get to the point where they're working off of your body and they're not working off of the chain. Remember my horse, he... Whenever you ask your horse to pivot, he backs. Um, so that means that you're pushing backward instead of pulling forward. So like I said, if you can get them to cross over in the front, that's more important than asking them to stick the back end. So first get them to cross over, pull them forward, pull them forward. And your left front, uh, let's see where I'm at with this video. The left front should always cross over the right because that's forward motion then. Left front over the right. So if your horse is going backwards, you're not pulling forward. That means you're pushing backwards. Uh, sorry, Courtney, I'm reading the questions again. It's okay. I just changed the settings to where um, I think they're going to just come to me to help help okay. you answer them. So. Okay. I think I have all of them for right now. Uh, I am going to show you a bad pivot. So it starts out okay. Oh, this is the good pivot. This is the bad pivot. It starts out okay. Um, it's really slow, really slow. And here she's pulling forward that she walks right out of it. So when you're training or you're practicing, it's okay to make them walk forward and out of it until you're ready to get them to set on those haunches. Um, but ideally, Again, this is the bad pivot. Look at how her head comes up up here. She's not in line anymore and she walks forward. She is not in line and she's gonna walk forward. So you're always wanting to make sure that you're watching your horse's back feet. I'm, you're gonna keep your eyes directly pointed at that left hind when you're doing your pivots. They always say to look up, but in the pivot, you're actually gonna stare at that foot so you know when to pull your horse forward and you know when she's gonna, either he or she, is gonna okay. come out of that pivot. I have a few questions for you. Okay. Why does the chain go under the horse's chin and not over the nose of the horse? So when you put that chain over your nose, A, it's super dangerous for your horse because there's a bone right here that is really small, and if you touch it, I mean, not touch it, but if you put a lot of pressure on that, um, you cause a lot of damage to that area on your horse's nose. And then how do I make my horse trot slower? Um, I've never been asked that question because <laughs> I always have horses that like to trot really slow. Um, but just slow your body movement down and instead of pushing forward, you're gonna kind of pull them backwards. Um, trotting fast is not bad unless you can't keep up with your horse. So if your horse trots fast, that's probably a good thing. Just trying to pull them back a little bit to stay with you. Someone says, I've always been told to look up and over the withers through a pivot in a showmanship pattern, especially ones confident with a pivot. Is this incorrect? Um, I was taught that too at one point and pretty sure I lost a finals because of it. But um, you should always look up where you're going and your eyes can be down for your pivot. So you can still be looking up with your eyes down for that pivot foot. You're gonna look at that pivot foot so you know when to pull your horse forward or when to pull that horse backwards. If you're not looking and you're looking up at the hip, uh, it'll cause problems for both you and your horse. Um, like I said, my gray horse, he will stick that pivot no matter what. I don't need to look at that foot, but overall for overall look and how presentable and nice things look, it's easier to look at that pivot foot. Okay, and one last question on this section before we'll let Kelsey move on. Again, um, her email address will be found in the video as well if we do not get to your question. Did they change the rules on which foot to pivot on? Judges have told us that the pivot should be on the right foot and will dock points for left foot pivots. It depends on what you're showing. So 4-H stuff is not gonna be as strict as your quarter horse, your paint, your pinnacle, things of that nature. But the right hind, like I said, all your movement should be forward movement. 
So if you're gonna pivot, you need to pivot on the right hind so that horse can have that forward motion. If you're pivoting on the left, you're having that full or you're having that backwards motion. So then that technically is backwards motion and they can dock points for it because everything is supposed to be forward moving except for the back. Um, with that being said, if you're going to a 4-H show, and I, I, I love 4-H, it's been my passion, obviously, but they're probably not going to dock you like they would if you're going to go to a quarter horse show. I will guarantee if you pivot on the left foot at a quarter horse show, you probably won't place. If you can get your horse to pivot and set a foot at a 4-H show, you will probably still place. It's just you probably will place under someone that pivots on the right hind that has a clean pattern. It's just in the details. Yeah. All right. Okay, so we have the setup next, which I don't have any video for the setup, but I have a picture. Um, for the setup, this one's a little under herself, but it's okay. Her feet are still square, still square up front, still square behind. Um, she's level, a little camped under, so I would like her to be back here just a little bit, but that's just me being extremely picky. Uh, when she did this setup, it only took a couple seconds. You should be able to count to three and your horse should be set up. A lot of people will ask, how do I get my horse to set up that quick? And I will tell you, you have to practice because um, the only way that you're ever gonna win consistently in showmanship is if you practice. And I think that probably goes with any species. I've never shown showmanship with any other species, but I know how many hours people spend in the barn and it goes the same way with um, horses and showmanship. So you're still gonna have those square feet. Um, the horse looks relaxed I and mean, she looks a little mad, but, and the exhibitor is square. Her arms are good. You want your arms to be high, but not so high that they're in your nose. Um, but probably at a 90 degree angle, like you're gonna carry pizza or a towel. When I practice, I use a towel and we go from there. So that is the setup. Again, you should be able to count to three. Your horse should be set up. Courtney, I think you had to figure out how to undo the them drawing on your screens. Okay. <laughs> I mean, it's not bothering me. Just letting you know for the next one. I didn't one. know that was a thing. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then lastly are your crossovers, and that will, that will conclude our maneuver section. But your crossovers are when your judge is moving around your horse. It's called inspection. So your judge is up front here, and let's say you're on in square, I can't do Roman numerals, four. So this is four here. And the judge is in one. And then let's say the judge moves to two. So you would move around your horse to be in one, et cetera, et cetera. You always want to be able to see the judge. So think of it as a push-pull system. If you're on in four and the judge is on one, they are going to pull you with them to go over to two while you're in one. So I have a video of that. I don't have a video of someone walking around the horse, but um, she's doing her crossover. So I need you to pay attention to her footwork. If people would stop drawing on my screen, you would see her footwork. Yeah, if everyone, I don't, we've never had this problem. So <laughs> I guess you've untapped some tools, but let's make sure that we are not touching the screen. Um, in any way. Again, you've discovered something that I don't think any of us knew how to do, but nope. um, <laughs> let's make sure we leave our decorations for pen and paper, please. Thank you. Okay, so like, watching, <laughs> right, watching her footwork, she takes um, a step over, across, and together. So then she'll do it again, over, across, together. And if you think of that rhythm, that's what your crossover should look like. So when you're watching this and you're thinking about it in your head, you're watching, so the judge would be going, she'd be back there. Now the judge is coming across, so she's moving back over here. And then the judge would pass the front foot and she would be back on the other side. So the crossovers are a little hard if you can't do it with multiple people. I didn't have someone to walk around her while I was videoing. Um, and like I said, we can't have face-to-face -face right now, so, um, we were minimizing as much contact as we could. 
So just envisioning that your horse is split into four, the front feet is a straight line across there, and then straight down the middle of their back is another line, and you would just cross the lines with the judge. If you're not sure about your quarters, I'm sure there's a volunteer that could help you um, in your county. If not, you can email me and if you're close, I can probably come help you or we can always talk more. Or when we have face-to-face -face stuff again, I can do a better video of crossovers. But again, focusing on footwork, one more time, she does step across together, step across together. The old style was karaoke where you would like step behind together behind and it was weird and you get kind of I don't know I feel like discombobulated so the style now is to step cross together okay Kelsey we have a few questions yes. um, most people say only three steps around is it okay to do more my horse is large and I am short I need an <laughs> extra step is that all right I'm short too um, so if you a couple steps is fine as long as you're not getting like your feet all tangled up. So if you can do like a large step and then go across, like a large step there, she's pretty tall. So like a maybe a little extra step is okay. I do a little extra step, I'm not gonna lie to you because I'm short too. So totally understand the short problem. Um, any questions? Yes, someone told me Hang on, let me sort out this here. I've been, again, please do not draw on the screen. I've been told that you should only take four steps across. Is that true? I think it's all preference. I mean, yeah. you just it's answer. all style. Someone told me no matter what to stay on the left side of the horse. Is that wrong? For showmanship, yes. Um, showmanship, you should be moving around the judge so the judge can see your horse the entire time. Halter classes, when you're gonna just show halter and there's no pattern. So halter is based on your horse and the appearance and fitness of your horse. Um, you can stay on the left side, it doesn't matter. But for showmanship, when there is a pattern and you're presenting your horse and you're presenting yourself, you need to move around your horse. Okay, and then do you have to be across from the judge, such as I'm in one and the judge is in three? Sorry, I missed that part. So you said the judge is in three and you would be in one, so you would need to actually be in four. So you want to be able to see that judge, and if you're in one over here, if you're in one and the judge is in three, you're not going to be able to see that judge very well. Okay. So you would need to be in four. And then let's say that judge moves up to four, then you would move over to one. Okay. And then the last question is, I show miniature horses at halter. I think the same rules apply, correct? Correct. So you would show a miniature horse just for showmanship, just the way you would a big horse. I will tell you that it's more difficult to do showmanship with a miniature horse because we have minis and we do it with showmanship with them. And uh, it's quite entertaining. So kudos to you. All right. Okay. Those are all the questions. Oh, I have one more. Halter That's question. Fine. I have an older horse and doesn't have a very good top line. Any tips for helping the top line? Um, yes and no. So a lot of the top line will depend on feed. Um, I don't work for tribute or anything like that. That's just what we use for our, my older horse. So my horse is 15, my gray one. And we use tribute for his top line. It also helps when you lunge to kind of like allow them to canter and round themselves. But if you're gonna ride, um, just keeping them rounded and using that top line, scratching them under the belly like with a curry comb will help them raise that back too. And that will work on that muscle as well. So a conversation, you can work on things at home, but a conversation you should have with a nutritionist or feed representative as well as potentially even your veterinarian. Yes, yes, okay. that would be perfect. All right, we've had a few more questions. We're gonna do a rapid fire session. When you walk, are you supposed to walk at the shoulder or the cheek? Um, Let me think about this, where I'm at when I do it. You would be, just behind the, I mean, if you're at the shoulder, you're too far behind. Your hand should be at the nose. I'm going to look for that picture if I can find a good one. 
Um, so here, this picture here is trotting, but I guess I'm more at the cheek than I would be the shoulder. Again, if you're at the shoulder, your horse is leading you. So probably just behind that cheek is a good spot for you to be because think that you still need your arms to be out, not out, but at a 90 degree angle pushing your horse forward. So I would say probably at the cheek-ish area. Okay. All right. Uh, another question, I think I can answer this one. Um, if a horse, is it normal for a horse to be jumpy when it's windy? Well, anytime you have an animal and their environment changes, it can change their behavior. So um, changes like wind or uh, different obstacles that could be placed in front of them can definitely change the personality and temperament of any animal. Um, how much distance should be between you and the horse? How long do you keep your lead? And what do you do with the excess? Whoa, okay. Um, so there's a, a couple different options there. Again, gonna depend on your horse and how well they respond to you. So my lead is gonna be longer on my gray horse than it is gonna be on my black horse. So with my gray horse, the, I'm not gonna say that you want like 10 feet of lead, obviously, but if you can have a little bit of lead between your chain and your hand, probably a couple inches, like three inches between of leather showing between your hand and the chain. Um, that's probably ideal. I don't really have a good picture of that, but whoever is asking that can always send me an email and I can do a better picture. But uh, then my black horse that I have now, I'm closer to the chain because she's not as broke and I have to adjust or guide her more with that hand than I would my other horse. So it's going to depend on your horse, how well they're um, trained for showmanship, how much you practice, because that's going to go into it. For your lead rope, I always, always loop mine. Always. In the videos, you can see she doesn't have it looped, but I always, like hers is just draped. She shows like that, and you can show like that with it just open, but I always suggest looping it because I think it looks cleaner. Okay. So, stylistic there. All right, so we're going to let Kelsey move on. Again, um, questions can be emailed to her as well if, if you didn't get a chance to get yours, or um, perhaps at the end, um, feel free to repeat the question. So let's let her move on to performance. All right, so performance, like I said, um, it's going to be very stylistic. It's going to depend on what you are comfortable with, what your horse is comfortable with, but every pattern should be accurate, precise, smooth, and have natural movement. You don't want to look like a robot doing some pattern, but then again, you don't also want to fly through your pattern either. You want it to look like there's a maneuver there and you kind of pause in between each maneuver. That's a new stylistic thing that people have been doing is pausing in between your, your maneuvers so that you're not going from your pivot right into a trot and you're not actually finishing your pivot, you're just taking off to your next maneuver. So you're kind of slowing it down a little bit, but still being very precise in what you're doing with that pattern. So I think I have a full pattern next so I can walk you through it. Um, I started recording this one a little late, so she's already walking off, but normally you would start on, she would have started on the right side because of where I was standing um, and she's switching over already. Again, that was my fault because I wasn't in the right spot. But, so she's gonna walk off. She's walking off really nice and precisely. Her arms are good. She's looking where she's going. I don't like that takeoff personally, but that's just me. Her head came up a little bit. I would like it to stay more level, but it was a good forward trot. We're backing. It was a nice smooth back and she's turning. So you can see each maneuver. It's not like she is just running through the pattern, trying to get it done as quickly as she can. Here she's setting up. If you count one, two, three, she's done. It shouldn't be any longer than that. So that's an example of a pretty good pattern. Uh, she's not rushing through it. It's very smooth, it's precise. The pattern was not hard, but um, it was just to give you an idea of what that pattern should look like. Okay, here's where everyone has all these questions and I can spend a lot of time here 
And if you have more specific questions of things that I don't reach or I don't answer, please let me know. But there's a lot of options for showmanship outfits and showmanship attire. 4-H requires that you wear a helmet. You don't have to wear a helmet for showmanship unless your fair requi requires that. Um, so I know like there's some fairs that require you to wear a helmet all the time. At our county fair in Marshall County, you can wear a hat as long as you're not mounted. So um, that's something to talk with your educator about if you're not sure. But someone asked about English attire. So if you're gonna do English showmanship, you need to be in English attire, which means tall boots, breeches, a jacket, your shirt that you would normally wear for English, and a hat or a helmet uh, or a hunt cap. So in the top picture, I have a hunt cap on because that was a pinot show um, for English showmanship. For Western showmanship, and I'll get to the halters and stuff after we do attire. Uh, for Western showmanship, everyone always thinks that you have to have blingy, expensive, super expensive outfits, which is not true. Um, when I was in 4-H, I had the blingy outfits, but I always chose to wear collared shirts and jeans instead, just because I feel like it was more reasonable for me to do that than wear the stuff I would wear for quarter horse. So you can wear a collared shirt. It can be any color, doesn't matter. Um, as long as you're looking clean and it fits you well, you don't want it to be super baggy. So if you know someone that could maybe take in your shirt or something like that, um, that would probably be helpful just so it's well fitted. You can wear jeans, you can wear dress pants. Some people have even gone to business suits. So you can wear like a suit for Western showmanship. You can wear a cowboy hat as long as it matches your outfit. So typically black, if you look at this bottom picture here, I have like a showmanship outfit on it's a jacket with all the bling, and I wear a charcoal hat with that outfit because it goes with the gray in the outfit. I have a gray horse, so it is complementary to my outfit. You don't want your hat to be hot pink if you are wearing something that is red and black. Uh, and you can wear a helmet. There's no penalty for you to wear a helmet, an ASTM F1163 helmet that is required for mounted stuff with horses in 4-H. So you can wear a helmet like this little girl here. It's actually my cousin. Uh, she has a collar shirt on. She's wearing her helmet because we were at a horse show that required all kids that were under 18 to wear a helmet. So she had to wear her helmet even when not mounted. So with her belt, her pants, everything is nicely fitted. So as long as you're comfortable and you're confident in what you are wearing, it really, you can kind of let your style show here. So I've change different styles because I've grown up. When I was a youth, I wore brighter colors. When I turned amateur, I wear black. <laughs> um, makes you look a little bit thinner. <laughs> so, um, and then posture is huge. Keeping your elbows in and towards your body, your outfit should allow you to do that. You don't want something so tight and so fitted that you can't breathe, but yet you want something that makes you look clean and you have clean lines. So Courtney, I'm gonna stop talking for a minute. Yes, so we're gonna do a rapid fire um, on these as well. Let me go up to the first one. The first one, one that I saw was, um, what is the dress code? We're kind of going over that, but um, do fake tails give you bonus points? Um, no, but it goes to the overall look of how you're presenting your horse. Okay. Um, I will tell you that at larger shows, yes, you would. it's not required but you should use them. At 4-H, probably not as big of a deal. Um, in English, do you use a plain halter or use an English bridle for 4-H? We will get to that part, but either is fine. Do you wear a number? Yes, you'll wear a number if it's yep. um, provided in 4-H for sure. Will the judge judge your outfit? Um, no, wanna... if you look at your stylistic, or if you look at your scorecard, um, Overall appearance will go into it, but they're not going to say, I don't like red, so this person is terrible on my list. Um, yeah. If you are showing at a horse show, you need to make sure if you decide to show English showmanship that that's allowed. So a lot of people will say it's Western showmanship, and so you would have to wear Western attire. So if you are going somewhere else, 
just make sure it's okay to do English showmanship as well. Okay. Um, all right, does it, should you wear your hair a certain way? Uh, yes. So um, you don't want it down in a ponytail. If you're showing halter, then ponytails are fine. But if you're doing showmanship and this goes for any pattern class and it's one of my pet peeves, your hair should be up either in a low bun and it should be up nicely and neatly. You can tie a little rib. I should have put a picture on here, but in the red outfit, I tied like a little red ribbon around my bun so that it added to the stylistic look of that outfit. Um, for English showmanship, you do your hair just like you're gonna ride hunt seat. You're gonna tuck it in under your helmet um, and keep it all tucked away. One of my biggest pet peeves, please, please, please put back your hair. Okay. All right. So again, um, questions, feel free to, to email Kelsey. We have lots of uh, things to get through and um, we want to make sure you have time in this hour, which Kelsey, you have about eight minutes. <laughs> Fine. We can get through it. Okay. Um, presentation of your horse. Like I said, you should clip and it should look clean. I always clip around the eyes, the muzzle, underneath the chin here, bridle path. Um, if your horse has white, on it. So in this picture, we would always trim around the face and the white hair so that we could baby powder it so it looked whiter. Um, if you need help clipping, please ask an adult. That can be really difficult, um, especially if your horse doesn't like clippers. Again, practicing with that is very helpful. Body condition scoring. So someone had asked me about the top line. It's, that's totally going to depend on your horse, but your body condition score for your horse or showmanship should be between a five and a six. Um, five is ideal and six isn't bad. I think most of my horses are at sixes because I like my horses to be a little bit sadder, um, but that's just me. So please don't come into the showmanship ring with a horse that I can see every bone in his body. Um, that is not gonna be good for showmanship and probably not good for your horse. So that's something you should work with your vet or your nutritionist with or whomever you work with to feed your animal. Or like I said, if you're working on top line, a lot of rounded scratching under the belly will help. Okay, equipment. This is where everyone had questions. Equipment, as far as English showmanship, you can show it has to be a plain leather halter, it has to be plain. It cannot have any silver on it, like the blingy Western halters have. It has to be plain, or you can show in your English bridle. I highly, highly, highly recommend getting a leather halter if you can. I know that some people cannot and that's okay, but if you can, I highly recommend it. It helps um, with consistency for that horse when you're practicing showmanship. You're usually going to practice in your halter and a lead rope. Um, you're not going to practice in the bridle. So it just makes that difference for that horse. I highly recommend halters. You can use bridles. Again, if I understand that you can't afford something like that, that's okay. Um, but if you can, halters are the way to go. Questions about that part? Western showmanship, you cannot show in the bridle and you have to show in a Western halter. So that is, I told you I'd get through it, um, the end of my presentation. Okay, so I, <laughs> I thought of a good thing to, um, I'll let you list your credentials here in a minute. We will copy and paste all of these questions and then Kelsey and I will work to get them answered and then we will post them on the Indiana 4-H um, website page under the horse project, as well as try to uh, also put that link somehow embedded in the, the YouTube video and um, share that information tomorrow when we post the actual recording on our Facebook page, um, just because we have lots of questions and um, we want to make sure that they are answered. So um, it is 355. So I'm going to, I'm going to give you a couple questions. The ones that are here on the bottom that I'm are in my face. Can you get a penalty if it takes longer than three seconds to get your horse set? Uh, yes. Uh, I mean, it probably won't be a huge penalty. And again, if your pattern's really clean, you're probably going to be okay, but practice those setups. They make a huge difference. Okay. In English showmanship, do you need a chain? Yes, so it, it's the same thing as Western showmanship, but you still need a chain unless you're doing it in your in your bridle. What are bits you can't use in the ring? Oh, uh, I'm gonna 
suggest you look at the rule book for yeah. that. <laughs> I don't know them all off the top of my head. <laughs> refer to your 4-H horse and po Indiana 4-H horse and pony um, handbook for that. Uh, what Facebook page will this be posted? Indiana 4-H. So just type in Indiana 4-H. It is should be the first one that pops up. Um, do you take points off for not setting up is what I think the message says. Um, again, it'll be a penalty. So I don't know which penalty it falls under. I don't know if it's three or five, but to answer your question in short, yes, there is a penalty for that. Uh, what jewelry is allowed? No jewelry for English showmanship, except for like small earrings. If your ears are pierced, Western, you can get a little bit more blingy and have large earrings. Some people wear necklaces and that's fine. I have gotten away from the necklaces and just zip up my jacket a little bit further and then just wear larger earrings is my suggestion. Okay. Um, can the, uh, an English showmanship halter, do you need to wear tall boots or do you have to be a certain age? Um, I think jodhpurs are allowed at, allowed at an age, but I don't know that age off the top of my head. So those would be a little bit shorter paddock boots, but um, most people, I would say probably need tall boots. Again, I would refer to your handbook for that one. If um, you're questioning it. One other question here. I'm going to, again, we will, like I said, we'll copy and paste the questions. Um, do you have to have a braided mane and tails in English halter? Um, they don't have to be braided. If you braid, if you want to braid your tail, you have to braid your mane. So that is a, like, you have to braid the mane if you're going to braid the tail. If you just want to braid your mane, that's fine. You can just braid the mane. Um, it doesn't have to. You can band just so it all looks clean. Some people, and I'm, my mom will kill me when I say this, but some people roach. And if you're going to have a crazy mane, I would rather you roach your mane than have something that's sticking up and out of control. Um, but banded or braided is recommended. Okay. And then... Can Western halters have the horse's name on it for show? I believe that's just something. Um, so I, I wouldn't. Um, your Western halter should be, if anything, plain, if you're going to go that route, or just have the silver on it. I wouldn't use like a barn halter. I'm not really sure. If you're talking like a leather halter with their name on it, I still wouldn't do that. I would just do a plain Leather. Whatever blends with the animal, and that's the same, I think, for any, I mean, something that looks nice but isn't uh, too differentiating. Right. Um, again, feel free to add your questions. I am going to put in at the bottom, Kelsey, I'll let you round off your presentation here before oh, I, I... I don't really have anything else. I mean, okay. if you need me, my email is on this PowerPoint at the very end. Um, my mailing address for work and if my phone number for work if you need me. Best way to reach me right now because we're all working remotely is um, email. So, okay. And Kelsey, if you'll share those last couple slides, sorry. Uh, yes, I can share it. There's that one and then. I think your screen's off. Oh, you're right, it is because it's moving too quickly. Sorry. No, you're fine. All right, so I'm getting ready to post um, a link. This, I have several of you asking um, about what the, the link is to figure out, or to, um, oops, that's not the right link, to, to complete the survey here to make sure to share that with your extension educators. And that link is located here at the bottom. It's this Qualtrics link. Um, right underneath my contact information. So uh, feel free to, to take a picture of that, to screenshot it, to write it down. I'm gonna leave it up here for a minute. Uh, bear with me while I I'd copied and pasted an, another link. So I'm gonna do that real quick. So I'll put it in the chat box and then you can directly go there and complete uh, the survey link. And again, we will share that with your counties. Um, appreciate everyone jumping on and being a part of our first ever uh, web series 
animal science. We're excited to keep the momentum going. Obviously, we've learned a couple things throughout. Um, some things with the chat box. You all had great questions, and we promise we will get to you to those as well. Um, but we could we could have asked Kelsey all kinds of questions. So we appreciate <laughs> Kelsey sharing her passion and um, her information with us today. Um, a couple other things, just as a reminder, again, this will be posted on the Indiana 4-H Facebook page as well as the YouTube channel. So be sure to check that out. Um, also, make sure you do the, the Qualtrics in the chat box there. Feel free to reach out to either one of us if you have any questions. Next week, April 7th on Tuesday, we will, we will kick off the day by, um, or we will kick off kick off our series that week by doing dog showmanship. So if you have an interest in dogs, you might tune in just to see what you can learn. Um, Britt Copeland, who is a 4-H educator in Brown County and also an avid dog judge, will be sharing some tips and tricks for that. So we thank you all for joining us. We hope you stay safe, stay healthy. Um, we're all in this together and we look forward to seeing you all this summer at our summer events and just keep working with your 4-H projects. Until next time, we'll see you then. If everyone will hang off, I'm going to post the link here. Every time someone messages me, it wants to send the message. So everyone should be able to see the Qualtrics link now. <laughs>